Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Sinatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our genetics discussion in the biology playlist. In the first video of this genetics series, we talked about introduction, followed by Mendelian laws, the first law and the second law. We talked about how scientists discovered that the DNA is the actual genetic material. We talked about the mutation and changes in the gene pool. And in the last video, we talked about Punnett squares. Today, we will apply those Punnett squares to sex link crosses. And then we will turn our attention to the topic of chromosomal maps and centimorgans. Please watch these videos in order. Please take a moment to review your definitions. Do you remember when we talked about dominant versus recessive, homozygous versus heterozygous? Please review the monohybrid cross, such as this one and the dihybrid cross, and remember the ratios. Now, since we are talking about sex-linked crosses today, let's zoom into this. Since when we write a female XX, one X is not dominant over the other, so we will not write uppercase and lowercase. Both of them will be the same. Both are written as uppercase. Now, if you want to add the defective allele, you add it as a subscript, like here. And therefore, XX is homozygous, and this is a normal female. How about X sub H, X? This is heterozygous, because this is different from this. Hetero means different, but she appears normal. Yes, she's a carrier, but phenotypically she appears normal. Genotypically abnormal, phenotypically abnormal, this is the carrier. Next, X sub H, X sub H, homozygous, that's true female that's true both are affected that's why she'll bleed she has hemophilia hemo means blood philos means to love she loves blood i.e loves bleeding i.e has hemophilia how about this doofus right here x sub h y he's hemizygous because males only have one x i cannot be hetero or homozygous because i only have one now females i could have two and they are similar that's homo Two, and they are different, that's hetero. But males can only have one, that's why they are hemizygous, half. And since males have just one X, if this X becomes abnormal, the entire male becomes abnormal. So this is a bleeder, hemophilic, blood lover. But this doofus is absolutely normal. How about a male carrier? A male carrier does not exist in a sex-linked or X-linked recessive. By the way, on your exam, when they say sex-linked, they usually imply X-linked recessive disease. So let's assume that this is one parent, here's the other parent. And again, this is your mommy and this is your daddy. And let's see the ratios. When a female carrier married a normal doofus, these were the results. 25% normal females, 25% carrier females who are genotypically abnormal, but phenotypically normal. Next, 25% normal doofuses and 25% bleeding doofuses. This is a doofus, this is a doofus. But phenotypes to the naked eye, 75% normal, i.e. not bleeding in front of me. And 25% is the bleeder with hemophilia. Let's change the scenario a little. We'll take the same mother, but we'll change the father into a hemophilic father. So here is a hemophilic father and a carrier mother. And here is what we get. 25% carrier females, 25% normal males, 25% hemophilic females, and 25% hemophilic males. Phenotypically, half of them are fine, not bleeding, half of them have hemophilia, bleeding. And of course, whether we're doing it this way or this way, half will be females and half will be males. Do you remember the crossing over which happened in prophase one of meiosis? This is meiosis. We have one and we have two. Where did the crossing over happen? Prophase one of meiosis one. Where did the tetrads happen? Prophase one, meiosis one. And this prophase one, the crossing over is super important because it explains to you Mendel's second law of independent assortment. What does that mean? The inheritance of one gene is independent, does not depend, is not affected by the inheritance of another gene. And if you recall from previous videos, I've told you that Mendel did not hear about linked gene, but now you will hear about them. 
These are the linked gene. What the flip does that mean? Two genes that are very close to each other on the chromosome and therefore they are less likely to be separated because they are hugging each other, so to speak, which means they are less likely to separate, which means less likely to have recombination, i.e. lower recombination frequency, theta. Put differently, when they are hugging each other, when they are linked genes, they will have a very low recombination frequency, almost zero. Conversely, the farther apart the two genes are from each other, the more likely that they will be separated during meiosis, which means higher chance of recombination, which means higher recombination frequency theta. Their theta will be closer to 50%. 50-50, you know, I can't predict it, can't tell. It could be this, could be this. Who is going to win the football match? I cannot tell, it's 50-50. Oh, like it's kind of independent? Yeah, this is Mendel's second law of independent assortment, because Mendel knew about the weakly linked gene, but he did not understand that some genes are tightly linked. So let's recap. If we are closer to each other, theta is low. If we are far away from each other, theta is high. So you can deduce that theta is directly proportional to the distance between two genes on a freaking chromosome. The higher the distance, the higher the theta, the lower the distance, the lower the theta. How do we measure the distance between genes on a chromosome? It's a unit discovered by a doofus named Morgan. And Morgan divided them into hundreds. One in a hundred, two in a hundred, three in a hundred, etc. One in a hundred is called what? Centi. Because centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. So we call them centimorgans. And by convention, if theta, the recombination frequency, is 1%, it means that the distance between the two genes on the chromosome is one centimorgan unit. One map unit. What if the theta is 2%? Then the distance is 2 centimorgan. What if it's 3%? 3 centimorgans. What if it's 25%? 25 centimorgans. 50%? 50, 50 centimorgans. Etc. 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 Therefore, if you know the theta, you can deduce the distance between two genes on a chromosome, which can help you deduce the order of genes on chromosomes. What the flip does that mean? Let me explain. Suppose that I told you the following. Here is theta. Here is your recombination frequency. Between A and B, the theta is 10%, i.e. 10 centimorgans. Between A and C, it's 15%. Between B and C, it's 5%. What is A, B, and C? Different genes on the same chromosome. Let's go. They told you that A and B are 10 centimorgans, so you just draw A and B with a distance between them of 10 centimorgans. Next, between A and C is 15%. Oh, between A and C, there is 15%, i.e. 15 centimorgan. Therefore, C could be on the left side or it could be on the right side. How can I tell? Wait, good things happen to those who wait. Read the third part. Between B and C, there is 5%. Okay, if I put the C here, between B and C could be 5, between A and B, 10, which makes sense, between A and C, there is 15. So everything here fits with what they told me. But let's try to put C here. Now, do you think the distance between this C and this B will be 5? If the distance between A and B is already 10, it's impossible. C'est impossible. Therefore, C is here, C could not be here. And this is how you answer the exam question. Even a child can do this. If you like this video, you will adore my general pharmacology course for macrokinetics and pharmacodynamics, as well as my Utakoids pharmacology course, management of asthma, management of peptic ulcer disease, management of rheumatoid arthritis, etc, etc. In the next video, we'll talk about the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Until then, please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionaris, where medicine makes perfect sense.